Our help is in the name of the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Won't you please join me in the call to worship, which can be found in your bulletins. In the midst of darkness, God brings new light. In the midst of confusion and fear, God brings hope and peace. In the midst of strife and stress, God comforts and soothes us. Rejoice in the wondrous things that God is doing. Time is fast approaching, not for parties or presents, but for the awareness of God's gift to us, the gift of the Christ child. Grace to you and peace from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. It is written in Isaiah, 
The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. The, the prophecy, it is written in Isaiah. The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them the light shined. For unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counsel, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. The Annunciation. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel said unto her, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was much perplexed by his words and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the, land, and the Lord of God will give unto him the throne of ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will, there will be no end. How can this be, since I am a maid? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Mary and Joseph in the manger. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first census and was taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in the manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. Mary and Joseph, a pitiful sight, so tired and dirty they gave me a fright. Sickly or dying, what was the matter? A room in the inn, impossible chatter. My rooms are all taken, not one empty bed. There will not be a room in O Bethlehem, I said. But their eyes told a story of hunger and need. I couldn't avoid them, so I tried a good deed. He cleaned off the stable, I cooked up a meal. We helped all we could, at least that's how I feel. For we noticed that Mary was expecting, and soon, so we prepared a delivery right under the moon. The child came so quickly, his face seemed delight. We felt something special had happened this night. Joseph said, God has sent him among us to unfear and hatred. He will be called Jesus. Through him, we deliver... We will be delivered from sin. Darkness will fade as we let God sub in. The angels and the shepherds. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping a watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. We don't often see angels in flight, but on that first Christmas, they lit up the night. Angels, cried one, will any lives be spared? Are they here to destroy us? Is our time on earth up? Have we seen our last day? 
Have we drunk our last cup? But peace on earth and goodwill to all was what the angels merrily called. With a light show that dazzled all who did see, the angels hallelujahed and sang out with glee. To Bethlehem, shepherds, the angels directed, to see Jesus the Christ, whom God has perfected. Go worship the Lord and follow his ways, and you'll find Christmas joy for all of your days. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. The shepherds you heard were quite sudden, were scared and quite stunned. They cried, what should we do? What is to be done? But the angels song claimed them, and then they believed. They rejoiced at the news, and now they felt relieved. So they trekked to the stable and worshipped the Lord. Then they hurried away to spread the good word. The villagers came to the manger. The shepherds were back singing praises to God for all they went, for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. And the villagers came across the land, the rich, the poor, the young, and the old. And when they arrived at the inn, they fell down and worshipped the Christ child, the Son of God, the Prince of Peace. was the very first Christmas, and there in the manger, the Christ child was born. It couldn't have been stranger. We heard of the angels. We saw the bright star. Many came to see Jesus. They came from afar. We knew he was special, God's very own son. He came to the earth to love everyone. The wise men from the east. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men who studied the stars came from the east to Jerusalem, and there, ahead of them, went the star. When they saw it, how happy they were! What joy was theirs! It stopped over the place where the child was. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and worshipped him. They brought out their gifts, opened their treasure chests, and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The star that shone brightly led wise men at night to Bethlehem stable, or stable to the manger's strange sight. They came bearing gifts in worship and love, praising God for God's wonders from heaven above. The wise men were kings, and they knelt on the straw. It was the oddest of things that ever I saw. So now at Christmas, we all take delight in the gift that God gave us that first Christmas night. In the gifts we receive and the ones that we give, let us never forget it in Christ that we live.
promise fulfilled, and so today we celebrate the promise that came true, God's promise made to all of us. As the kings and the shepherds gathered in that humble, quiet place, we too can gather here and now look upon his face. We too can bring him gifts and kneel beside his bed of hay. We can sing the angels sang to welcome him today. Good morning and Merry Christmas. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Amen. The reading this morning is from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 through 23. But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you, and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. And we urge you, beloved, to admonish the idlers, encourage the faith-hearted, help the weak, be patient with all of them. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord. Lord. 
long ago, a man sought the perfect painting of peace. The winning entry had a tumultuous waterfall cascading down an icy rock precipice. You could almost feel its, its penetrating cold spray. Stormy gray clouds threatened to explode with lightning, wind, and sleet. In the midst of the thundering noises and bitter chill, a lone, scrawny tree clung to the rocks at the edge of the falls. One of its branches, one of its branches reached out in front of the torrential waters as if foolishly seeking to experience its full power. A little bird, a little bird had built a nest in the elbow of that branch, content and undisturbed by the stormy surroundings. She rested on her eggs with her eyes closed and her wings ready to cover her little ones, she manifested peace that transcends all earthly turmoil. This Sunday in Advent, we light the candle of peace. The lack of peace, I believe, and this is not a stretch to say it, is at the heart of our problems in this world. And all of us, all of us at one point or another in life, no matter how hard we try, have contributed to the situation. At my previous church, I found myself embroiled in a very difficult situation. Terrible things were being said about somebody I cared about very much. In defense, I felt compelled to speak up. Big mistake. This only dragged me deeper into the middle of a fierce disagreement that went back and forth for nearly a week. Things quickly became very heated. On the inside, I was going through a turmoil worthy of a presidential debate and was under a tremendous amount of stress. I was not at peace at all, but in a state of constant angst. What I wanted to say and what I did say were two completely different things. Thank goodness for the rules, the common rules of of etiquette when it comes to emails. Never argue a point after a dinner party. And never hit the send button until you've waited at least 24 hours. But of course, ask me how I was doing during that period, and I would tell you, oh, great, how about you? One would never have known how upset I was. And you know what? I don't think I'm any different than... Most people, though, and I've seen the same thing on occasion here among all of you. We have a human tendency to not want to dump our woes on others, and rightfully so. No one wants to be known as a constant complainer. The unfortunate side effect of this is that because we don't see the simmering, we often don't expect the pot to boil over when it does. This happens every day in our lives, and usually on a small scale. But in our society, we also hear of situations where someone appeared to be happy to those around them until that person snapped like that. Today's scripture from 1 Thessalonians is a summary of good advice for all Christians to follow in life. And I would like to focus on the last verse, number 23, because in it, I believe, is the end result to all the pieces of advice that precede it. Paul says, 
May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, may the God of peace completely purify us and make us holy. If we are to be made in the image of God, then we must seek to live our life according to a divine peace, not just a physical peace. That peace is one that touches our spirit, our soul, and our body, keeping them sound and blameless. Spiritual peace is not as as tangible or as easily identified as bodily peace. We all know bodily peace. Spiritual peace, it is the internal peace we have with God. We gain spiritual peace through our faith, our hopes, our prayers, and our worship, among other things. What we believe and how we incorporate those beliefs in our lives here in this physical world is how we achieve harmony on a spiritual level. And it is on this spiritual level that we are truly able to gain peace with one another. Peace on a soul level. Peace on a soul level is that inner place inside of us. It is where our conscience, imagination, memory, affections, and reasons all reside within us. How we innately feel as a human being, living and breathing in our existence. Do we, by default, have predominantly positive, loving thoughts as we journey through life? Or do we hold bitterness and vengeance in our hearts? Some people would say that we have no way of influencing peace on a soul level that we can't control these thoughts. They, they simply exist. But I would disagree with that. I would disagree and say that achieve peace on a physical and spiritual level, and it will change the peace we experience on a soul level. How do we go about doing that? Paul says, love those who labor among us and have charge of us. Be at peace among ourselves. Encourage the faint-hearted. Help the weak. Be patient with all of them. See that we don't repay evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets. But test everything. Hold fast to what is good. And abstain from every evil. <clears throat> 700 years before Christ, the prophet Isaiah wrote, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What a magnificent and emphatic exclamation mark that is in Isaiah's prophecy. Remember, remember that it was, it was spoken to a people who were at war and whose king was not handling the situation well at all. To them is the promise that they will see a great light. Their warfare will end because unto us a child is born and his name will be called Prince of Peace. He is the prince of peace because his kingdom will be one of peace. It won't be established by fighting a war, but by bringing peace. It won't be maintained by keeping an army to prevent enemies attacking, 
but will be a kingdom that he upholds in peace. What did Jesus say to Pilate? My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest. But my kingdom is from another place. The end result is we will have peace. We will have peace. When we are made right with God through putting our faith in Jesus, we have peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Emmanuel means God with us. That will never change. Not for Paul and the Thessalonians 750 years later, nor for us some 2,700 years later. He still is here with us. He will be reigning with his peace forever and ever. We need not fear. Emmanuel, God is with us. This powerful God that we are talking about did not come to wage war, but to be a reconciler. Jesus comes to reconcile men and women with the past to God. This mighty, powerful God's method of choice is peace. Not force, but peace. World peace is something that that most people want. The desire for it is so well known that it is now a cliche. If you could have one thing in life, what would it be? World peace. World peace. Yet as much as it is desired, it has also been a seemingly impossible quest. I read an article in a recent journal study. It revealed that in the last 3,500 years of recorded history, there contained only 286 years of peace. That's less than 8 What's worse is that during that period, over 8,000 peace treaties were signed and broken. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what it would be like to live in a world where there is no war, no fighting, no arguments, no disputes of any kind? None of us can really fathom what a world like that would be like. Why? Because we have never experienced it or even anything remotely near to it. People throughout the centuries have talked about peace, but few, if any, have ever had an effective plan to bring peace to the world. But God has a plan. God has sent us a prince of peace. In the midst of this busiest time of year, stop doing everything that you are doing. Listen. Listen and feel the God of peace. Like the bird at the waterfall with its eyes shut, undisturbed by the stormy surrounding and resting on her eggs, close your eyes. Focus on the God of peace and rest on your faith. The people who originally heard Isaiah's message were encouraged to rejoice before God. The announcement some 2,700 years ago that Christmas would one day arrive was a great cause for celebration. We too can celebrate with them. We too can say that unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and we too can know him by the same fourfold name, Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Let us pray. Lord, we await your arrival knowing that you are the Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace, who lives and reigns forever. Amen.
This morning's offering will now be received. Gracious God, you fill us with hope, joy, love, and peace. With these gifts, help us to be bearers of the Christ light in your world. Amen. Are there any concerns or prayers that that you have? Yes. Thank you. Anyone else? Any other prayers or concerns? Go ahead. I'm sorry, the noise. Thank 
Thank you. Anyone else? Any other prayers or concerns? Yes, Joanne. Absolutely. Let us bow our heads then in prayer. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. This morning as we enter into our moment of silence, a uh, moment of focus silence that we have each each week. I ask for you to pray for someone you know who is struggling for peace in their life. Let us pray. Heavenly God, as we anxiously await the, the coming of the Prince of Peace, we know that some of us are feeling anything but peaceful. Our lives have become harried, and the thought of merely surviving the onslaught that comes with this season seems like a tall order. The to-do lists get longer, and the days get shorter between social engagements, shopping, and added family commitments, we can get swept up in a frenzy. Help us to remember in those times the true meaning of Advent and to focus on your divine peace. Lord, we realize our imperfections. Forgive us for those times in our lives when we allow ourselves to lose sight of your peace a peace which surpasses all understanding. Remind us, remind us in those times, God, of your forgiving grace. Lord, we pray for the leaders of your world. Help them to bring about peace for all people. Bless those in our community, in this congregation, who are struggling to make it from one week to the next. Let them find peace in you and generosity in others. And now, God, we pray that you will bless the individuals, families, and loved ones that we have shared with you. We pray for Doug, God, who has suffered a setback in his cancer treatment. Uh, we pray that the doctors and nurses caring for him will use their skills to the best of their abilities. We, we pray for the neighbor in Ringwood that is struggling with cancer. May you bring peace to that individual. Uh, let your peace envelop that person. And God, we pray for Leanne, who will be going in for a procedure later this week. We pray again that doctors and nurses will use their skills to the best of their abilities, that they will comfort her, that your presence will be felt by Leanne, that you will comfort her every, every moment that she is there. Uh, bless her and be with her during that procedure. God, let your light shine on those we have offered up by names and on those who remain unmentioned, unmentioned but on the tablets of our hearts. We ask these things through the prayer your son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <laughs>
May Almighty God bless you and hold you in God's arms as you leave here today to proclaim that Christ is coming. Amen.